You're listening to Staka on Air. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Stoke on Air. I'm here with Dr. Boyle, and we're recording quite the spicy interview today. Yes, sir. We have some insanely hot wings from Buffalo Wild Wings and some equally hot questions. Ooh. Let's get into it. Well, how are you feeling before we get into this? Can't wait to sweat. Oh, right. Okay. Are we going to go to the cool ones first or the hot ones I first? I think let's start with the hot one. Okay, good. All right. Just to get us into the flow. All right. Now, you guys are going to join me, right? Yep. Of course. Dean, you're not going to cry this time? I will not cry this time. No. <laughs> All right. Let me just pour myself a big glass of milk because I know okay. I'm going to be needing it. It's a little hotter than I remember it. <laughs> it is a lot. Oh, boy. Okay. Mm. Let's get into this. All right. So... My first question is, what do you really do? Explain it to the students, because what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? What does your job consist of? <coughs> if you can, of course. Whew. What? Uh, well. <laughs> Let me take my glasses off. Uh, a little hotter than I thought it was last time. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. Whew, milk. Sanford already done with his. He has oh, a master right. technique. Oh. All right. Uh, well, every day is different here at Conestoga. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, throughout the day, I'm walking around the building. I'm talking to students, observing teachers, checking out classes, mm -hmm. visiting large spaces. So nothing is ever the same every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, being visible and present in the building. Okay. I also in charge of several things in the building where like the facilities. Mm -hmm. Reservations of things. Also in charge of school safety, so I'm always around the building checking on doors, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and various other things. So there's things like I don't do every single day, but there's things I do mainly I try to do as a routine every day. Out of everything that you do currently, what do you think is probably your favorite thing to do? Talking to kids. Like now? It's like this. Yep. Just Being like this. able to walk in the atrium, sit down and talk to kids who are working on different things. Mm -hmm. Seeing kids are watching kids, kids walk in here like the other day, kids are sitting over this table right here having a chess match. Mm -hmm. It was pretty oh, intense, yeah. like six yeah. kids watching them. Oh yeah. That was cool. Um, some kids are up here playing Mario Kart on their phones. Mm -hmm. uh, I love Mario Kart, so I watch them. Um, uh, playing, talking to the seniors as they're leaving to go out to lunch about what I like to eat for lunch and they can bring it back to me. Uh, just things along those lines. Having interactions with kids because, you know, I'm, a, I'm still a teacher at heart. Mm -hmm. All right. So beyond that, I want to get into a little bit of the policies that have been implemented this school year. Uh -huh. Have the new policies really worked to decrease class cutting rates and everything compared to last year? Well, we just had a senior class meeting today, so it's great that you asked that. And one of the things I did for the seniors in that meeting was to thank them for their cooperation to this year. Because as you said, the class cuts, the age range, all the things we were worried about the students in this building have stepped up to follow the rules. Mm -hmm. And so I know people might seem it's harsh to lose privileges for a period mm -hmm. of time if you cut a class or you do this, mm -hmm. but it's worked. Yep. The number of class cuts I deal with as a senior, uh, senior uh, principal have really diminished. Um, the atrium, as you look around here, it looks great. Mm -hmm. It is kids a are lot really, Kids are really respecting it. So I, I am really happy and appreciate the students in this building for really stepping up and mm -hmm. having the responsibility for those places. Okay, all right. And I want to get to a little bit of a fun <laughs> one. Can you play an instrument? I have played an instrument, yes. Do you play in like high school band? No, no, no. no. In high school I was strictly, uh, I ran track. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, uh, I I was on track, I was on the spirit committee. I was on, uh, I founded the first Model UN at my Ooh, school. Wow. I founded the uh, uh, Amnesty International Club. Oh, wow. um, yeah. I did a lot of things in my school, and then my school I was uh, 18 years old. I was a high school senior. I coordinated the largest track meet for high school outside of Penn Relays in the country wow. in my high school. Really? Yeah. That's really impressive. What were all the logistics like that? And is that kind of how you got into like planning and doing it? It was. I mean, because as a high school senior, a lot of people give me responsibility. So you get more responsibility, you get used to it, and you really want to do more. And so by the time that I was 18, when that happened as a senior in high school, according this huge track meet, mm -hmm. I, I liked it. I liked doing those things. Mm -hmm. And at that point, teaching was not my major, so I went the first year, first year to college, and I'm changing my major to become a teacher now. Okay. Mm. So talking a bit more about your high school experience, what was high school like for you? Oh, I loved it. Loved I it? loved my high school experience. 
they went to um, they went to an all boys Catholic high school in the city. Mm -hmm. Very different now, granted it's like thirty years later. Mm -hmm. But it was it was fun. It was uh, enjoyable. We did things that were uh, community based. We did things that um, things that made me have lifelong friendships with people. Like mm -hmm. The people I met the first day of high school, I'm still best friends with to this day. Mm -hmm. And we don't talk ever a time because as you get older, you drift apart. You're, you drift apart, but your family takes over some other things. But when mm -hmm. you see these people the first time you've seen them like in three months or three years, mm -hmm. to get, it's like the time didn't exist. Yep. And so that's something I think you guys will feel mm -hmm. and see when you guys get older that. You know, the people you have made friends with now will be the friends you have the rest of your life. And I know people say college will be the same way. Mm -hmm. I don't know many people that are as close to college people they made friends with as high school people. Because mm -hmm. yeah. this is the most vulnerable you are in your life. Yep. People are seeing you from a little freshman who does the stupid things <laughs> to a senior when you have more maturity and mm -hmm. they remember where you came from. Yep. And it's always nice to come home and see people that remember you where you were versus where you're at. Mm -hmm. Here, here's a question for you. Um, you mentioned that before you were a teacher before you became a principal. How did you become a teacher? Did you always want to become one? No. I wanted to be a hotel restaurant manager. Wow. I think we talked about this last time. So yep, my yeah. first major was hotel restaurant management. And um, I had a path that I was going to go to college for that major mm -hmm. and then go to um, Vegas. One other wing. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, wow. Right, wow. And then go to Vegas right. as, a, um, right. as an employee of, of a couple different places because I had family who worked out there. Okay. And in 1991, give me a few minutes. In 1991, the um, a recession hit. Mm -hmm. oh. I changed my major, so I'm not going out there. They stopped building all the hotels, and I still wanted to become a teacher because my experience running that track meet in a senior in high school led me to that. And then I became a teacher, and then right away the principal saw me doing different things. He mm -hmm. said, "Pat, Dr. Boyle, you should become." The athletic director, so he named me assistant athletic director when I was hired as a teacher the first year. Mm -hmm. wow. Two years later, they got rid of the AD. They hired me immediately as the AD, oh, and wow. then I was already track coach at that point. I started coaching track, and then four, five, six years later, uh, the central office called me up and says, "We want to move you from this school to an assistant principal." And I said, "Never thought they'd come to assistant principal." Hmm. And then four years after that, they called me back and say, "Do you ever thought about working in the central office?" I'm like, "No, what's that?" <laughs> And he wow. moved me down as like an associate superintendent wow. for the, for the uh, schools I was working at. So you could really pinpoint that one moment of you arranging that massive track relay as kind of the most influential point in your life? Yep. Wow. Yep, it was. I never thought about that until you just said that, to be honest with you. Really? Hmm. Never thought about that until you said that. So that's where everything you kind of found out, like yes. what you really Everything like connected, basically. Yep. So focusing this, uh, focusing this a bit more to Stoker. Jesus, this is hot. Oh my yeah. God. Um, have you, what are some like cultural changes you've noticed in the past, or since in the past 10 years, like what are some like comments and reflections you have about Conestoga and its culture? I think as a school, we become more unified in our differences mm -hmm. than in what separates us. Yep. And I think when you come in this building, I mean, there's been uh, definitely an increase in certain groups within our building. And I think it's allowed us to see us who we really truly are as a community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And for me to see the interactions between the students that are all positive, I don't say any negatives, is great to see. It's mm -hmm. like it's like a micro microcosm. I can't even say the word. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small part of the world at Conestoga, mm -hmm. and everyone's so kind here. I mean, I know that in the recent past we didn't have great experiences with some of the, like in this place right here, some of the, the behaviors here. Yep. But this year just watching like kids interact and how they're talking about things and it's not just about like what are you doing after homework I mean, what are you doing after this it's like let's talk about some academic things you're working on or let's talk about these things and you just see it in the kids and the way they interact with each other which is great I think that our we have more similarities than we do differences as a community mm -hmm. but I think we value those differences in each of us as a community and mm -hmm. I don't think I say that just politically because I know people think those these times that you say these things just because it's politically correct. I don't, I don't talk that way, mm -hmm. but I see the kids in this building really being kind, compassionate, understanding, and reaching out to everybody. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's just, that's everyone in this community. What would you say your favorite um, memory working here is? Oh God. Besides eating wings? <laughs> mm. Mm, good. Look good. Garlic parmesan, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have one of these yeah, to just calm down. Calm the spices. down, exactly. Oh my God. I would say I, I wouldn't say it's one event, mm -hmm. 
I think for me, I've been here 15 years. Mm -hmm. It's my 15th year. And I've had 14 graduations. That's the best, day, best thing I see every year. Mm -hmm. Because it's not about just like having the kids walk across the state. It's like, you're out of here. It's about seeing the kids who have worked their tails off to get to that point. Seeing the kids who struggled and seeing them achieve something that is pretty substantial. And then seeing it, especially kind of over at Team Field, mm -hmm. 5,000 people coming to watch a graduation. I think that is, the, is to me that the event that each year I get excited for. Mm -hmm. And like the next day, it's like a letdown, like that's over. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? It's not like a joy that it's over, it's, it's a letdown because now we gotta start over and do it all over again next year. So speaking a bit more about graduation, do students come back and visit you very often? Yes. Always memorable? Always memorable because it's the kids who, who struggled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or the kids who didn't like the fact that I had to enforce the rules. And they come back and we have great conversations because they know that with me, it's not personal. It's never personal. It's about following the rules. Why mm -hmm. do I want you to follow the rules? Because being able to follow the rules means you're doing what you need to do to be, to be successful in mm -hmm. the school. And so if you're cutting classes, if you're doing this or doing that, it's about respect, it's about following through, it's about doing your work, yep. all those things. So it's funny because the kids who come back who are the kids I see the most often, <laughs> and they are like, you know, you know, Boyle, what's going on? And they're all excited to see me because they want to tell me how they're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's like the best thing is you hear how this kid's doing this and this girl's doing this and how much more successful they became because they left here. It's not because of me, it's because of what they did. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to sit there and tell, tell me or other teachers really, this is what I'm doing. And mm -hmm. you can say, I'm so proud of you. And mm -hmm. I, think, I think people want to hear that. Yeah. I think they want to hear that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so this is a bit more recent. We had drafted this up before the end of the semester, before we found out that testing days are over. What kind of like feedback and kind of feelings led to the ending of testing days? Well, we took feedback from everybody. We talked to the teachers, we talked to the students, we talked to the parents. Mm -hmm. um, we talked to everybody to see what they thought about it. And I think the most important thing that Dr. Meisinger for heard from was really the students. Mm -hmm. we did, each of us, did, each of the assistant principals did the class meetings. I talked to the seniors and they're like, it's not great. You know, yep. they appreciate it. I think the seniors said they appreciated what we were trying to do, mm -hmm. but in the senior year, you're taking double math or double science yep. or double yeah. history. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is that they're getting walloped on those mm -hmm. days. It's like, oh, okay. Not that we didn't think about it, but we thought it'd be a little bit easier. Easy to manage. Yep. So. Uh, Dr. Meisinger spoke to us, talked about the feedback from all those groups, mm -hmm. and we made a decision and agreed that it's probably time to discontinue this. But we asked the teachers to be flexible with the students. You have to understand is that sometimes you have a kid who has four tests in a day. Yep. It's not fair. Mm -hmm. And you have to work with your students to make sure that's a, yep. a positive experience, not a negative one. I like that because um, in my AP Gov class, we did like a thing where we did like, um, like mock bills and stuff like that to pass mm -hmm. through them. Almost all of them were related to, you know, let a kid take a test later um, and do away with testing days or you know, make up two tests a semester that you, know, you failed, right? Mm -hmm. And within like a certain time span and something of that sort. And mm -hmm. those were really popular bills among the student body. Cool. I do think it was a really good idea to like test mm -hmm. it out though. Cause mm -hmm. I think that when we actually test out these new policies that we come up with and have a little trials for them, it's really effective to see like what uh, things that we didn't think were gonna happen yep. actually happen. And we try to plan for everything. The problem yeah. is is that you can plan out for everything, but it's still, it's that things will still go wrong it's something could still go wrong, so something you didn't think of or someone no one thought of. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's not saying it happened here, but we needed to see that the students were either successful at it or not successful at it. And that's why we moved away from it because they weren't successful. Yeah. Okay. All right. um, leading on to like different policies, um, mm -hmm. I was curious to know, if we would have electronic hall passes soon, because I do know that like that the was, no, high five IDs. I remember hearing a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we were we, high five. We're not using. Uh, there's different reasons why we're not using them right now, but uh, we are looking at different programs that are out there in different schools to see what they're using. Mm -hmm. um, we don't believe going out there to be the forerunner <laughs> yep. in something unless someone can go out there and show us how it works and then what the, what the issues with it. So there's a couple schools using a program now that we are looking at how they're successful with it mm -hmm. to see if it's one something we could do here. Okay. So we do like the idea of the hall passes, whether digitally or paper. I like to see digitally because it makes it more manageable yep. for everybody, but we have to see how it can work, how it will function, and if there's mm -hmm. anything that you know, just like the testing days, if someone else is going out there and found out the problems with it, yep. we want to know what the problems are before we even go into it. So we don't want to find the problems. We want someone else to find the problems and tell us and what we get need back to do to, to improve it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. And as a junior, I wanted to ask, why can't juniors leave for lunch anymore? Well, it was only for the COVID period that we did it. Okay. And uh, for all the time I've been here before me, it was always 
a senior privilege. Mm -hmm. And because it's a senior privilege, it's World the idea that you raise that level. So over COVID, we decided to do almost every privilege for everybody. And last yep. year we did juniors because there was still that idea that people weren't feeling safe going to the cafeteria and eating yep. and, not, and taking off the mask and eating and those things. Mm -hmm. So we still continue that. So now we're back to fully traditional mm -hmm. uh, programs. We decided to go back to what our traditional privileges were. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask, are you aware of the term like getting boiled and all the little stickers? Yes, that I mean? yes, I am. I, I think it's funny. Mm -hmm. I laugh at it. I don't think it's. I don't think it's meant in a disrespectful or mean way. Because mm -hmm. um, I actually have those little boiled uh, things on my computers in my office right now. So, I, I, it's it's if that's what the kids like to say and do, it's fine with me. I don't think there's any meaning in it for the kids to be harmful with what mm -hmm. they're trying to say with that. And I got to ask about the big speech that you give to every class at the start of the year. Like, mm -hmm. how many times do you practice that speech and, like, how you're going to present it? It changes every year. It's not the mm -hmm. same speech. It's always yep. different. Mm -hmm. And I would say I do not rehearse it. You don't? I do not. Off the top? Nope. Well, I, I, I do the presentation. I do the PowerPoint. And I look mm -hmm. over, make sure I don't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. But I, my belief is, like, just as you're a teacher in a classroom, you don't practice in a home what you're gonna teach the next day. Yep, you absolutely. go over it, you look at the lesson plan, you look at the activities, you look at the timing, you look mm -hmm. at all those things, their materials, and then you go in and you do it. Mm -hmm. I believe in that same philosophy and also believe too, if I walk in there and you as a student would see me up there and it looks rehearsed, mm -hmm. what would you think? That is true. I wanna, I wanna like it. Fit, exactly, yeah. so you want to feel that the presentation you're having is meant for you mm -hmm. and that it is from Yep. I would say it's from the heart. Mm -hmm. yep. I don't go to those presentations and give those presentations because I want kids to feel uncomfortable or the kids to feel like it's okay. not. I want mm -hmm. them to know that as administration, we care, mm -hmm. we understand, yep. we're here for them and support everybody. But the same token, these are mm -hmm. the yeah, reasons why we're here. For speeches. Mm -hmm. right. You want to grab another wing, Dr. Boyle? No, I'm okay. Okay. Because okay. that one's still going down mm -hmm. my throat oh, right man. now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And so, then I wanted to ask real quick so, how mm -hmm. did you like like your specific path to a teacher? Because you talk about how you've been a teacher, but what did you teach? And like, like, were you a history teacher? Were you a math teacher? I was, when I went back to the old school that I graduated from, mm -hmm. I was a history teacher and a religion teacher. Okay. So I taught both. Mm -hmm. And I loved history. Religion was fun mm -hmm. because it's a different avenue mm -hmm. to really talk to students about. And I taught um, moral theology. Mm -hmm. And I taught uh, Bible history. Mm -hmm. For from the from the theology standpoint, for history, I taught U.S. history, which I loved U.S. history, mm -hmm. and so um, teaching people. Th some people sit there and believe teaching is actually an easy thing. It is the most difficult thing in the world to do, in my mind. Mm -hmm. Besides being a doctor, um, because you have to plan everything out, and the best teachers you have, the teachers I've seen here have planned out what's going to happen, what's going to go on, and are able to predict how teacher, students will react to things. Mm -hmm. But also, the best teachers, I think it's almost every teacher here, they have a passion for their subject. And I loved history. I could walk <coughs> in there, you could, t you could, the students, I felt the students could hear me in what I loved about the history. <coughs> and when I walk into, like, if you walk into, like, any history teacher's class here, it's like Mr. Zimmerman. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's, he's, really he's a amazing. great teacher. Just a, just one example of, of one of the teachers here. And then what he does with the psychology classes, he's so into it. Mm -hmm. If you walk in Mr. Pometeer's class, it was a history, history teacher. Mr. Pometeer, oh my God, he gets so excited when he's talking about specific topics mm. and what's going on and this, that, the other thing. Um, if you walk into Dr. Best's classroom when he's talking about chemistry, he is like, I, I mean, I, I don't know how the man remembers all those things about chemistry, but Have it's like... Have you seen any of his demos? Oh, oh man. he's crazy. Oh, yeah. But, he, but you can tell that he, he likes it. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a lot of really motivated teachers, oh. and mm -hmm. I think all of our teachers here are, like, really great, and I really yep. appreciate, like, that mm -hmm. in Conestoga. They're yeah. all, like, very helpful, all really... Uh, and you don't get that at our place. Like, I've been in other schools, and it always amazes me when you talk about teachers here, is that they do they do, do a lot to support the students mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And it's not like in a mean way or an uncaring way, they want to make sure every kid gets the information they possibly can from yep. the place, mm -hmm. you know? All right, Dean, you have a question? Yeah, so you've been working here for 15 years, right? Yeah. How, like, what is the difference between working here and like how big Constoga has gone? Because it's physically, the building's expanded mo yes. like four different times throughout the years. Since multiple since times, it, multiple times over the years. And the student body has also just grown so yep. much because the area has grown so much. So 
I think, I think first off, when I first came here, it was like 1,800 kids. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now we're about almost at 23, 2,400. So we've grown like 25% in about yes. 15 years. Yes. So the junior class, your class is the biggest class. I believe it's just over 700 students. So 700. is the sophomore class smaller than the junior class? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh. Not by much, though. But mm. it's the biggest class coming through. It's that large bubble. And so I, I would say one thing is that size. Yes, that's what we had to add on this, this amazing extension onto the building. It really is with 25 additional classrooms, more bathrooms, single stall bathrooms now. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about the changes I've seen in those 15 years, it's, it's everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about this, as a high school, we have to evaluate and change things every year. You mm -hmm. need to do that. But over a course of four years, one year, when you guys come as freshmen, you're here. By the time we leave, the school's over here. Mm -hmm. So it's one, two, three, four. Not by choice, yep. but by culture. Mm -hmm. what, what has changed in those students or what are their needs that have changed us mm -hmm. to do these things? So everything, you, if you walk into a building four years ago to now, you're going to see single stall bathrooms. You're going to see seating like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I, you would have told me 15 years ago, we'd have a space where kids can sit on a couch. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, why? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Why are kids going to sit on the steps and lay out there? Yeah. But mm -hmm. I mean, 15 years ago, I would have seen, seen a kid laying on the steps. I'm like, what are you doing? Do you know what I mean? Like, get up. See a kid sitting on the couch. You can't lose slight sleep on the couch. So those things are just some of the simple changes. But kids have changed dramatically over those 15 years. Yep. I mean, there's different <coughs> desires, different needs. If you would have told me 15 years ago, some of the degrees our kids are going for in college right now, I said, there's no way. Mm -hmm. There's just no way. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I remember a student here. Um, all the students mm -hmm. are great here. So this is just one story. I've had a student here who was working uh, down at Penn in a laboratory for the, I don't know how to say, but basically the the cancer unit. Yeah. And he was doing research. Yep. I was like, I had called him in a couple times because he was late to the building like all these times out. So I had to call him his parents and what's going on and all this stuff. And he starts telling me, I have no idea. He's like, oh, I'm Dr. Boyle, I'm working on a pen, I'm working in the cancer unit. And I'm like, you're 18 years old. What do you think? He goes, well, I work in the oh, lab. Man, We're the helping him come up insane. with this. He's working on this, the cure for cancer. And I'm like, you're 18. Yeah, you're, I, I've been. You're 18. <laughs> So I'd say like one of the classes that I personally AP research, like one of my yes. friends is doing something with like nuclear energy and wow. efficiency. It's crazy. Like the opportunities we got here to, I mean, not only that, like the student body itself, like I've seen, I think we had a few, we have quite a few people in the past years who've had their own patents. They've won like awards. Like There's a student stuff, in, it's your, crazy. in the senior class who I greatly appreciate. He's a really good kid. Mm -hmm. Has his own business. Wow. Yep. I mean, he's very successful at it. And it's like, and when you talked about the student, about what his goals are and all stuff, he knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. It's impressive. Yep. But it's just not him. There are many other students yep. who do many, a ca crazy, many a cr uh, uh, crazy accomplishments that 15 years ago, kids would not even be trying. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think the student has changed into be more of a goal getter, mm -hmm. to be more of a person who looks at what the risks are out there and mm -hmm. not afraid to take them. Okay. 15 years ago, Kids were looking at cookie cutters. This is what I have to do to go to Penn. This is what I have to do to go to Yale. This is what I have to do here. Mm -hmm. Now it's changed. A lot more freedom. A lot, a lot more, more freedom and, and not afraid to take the risk. Mm -hmm. So like a dare to leap type thing? Correct. Okay. Yep. And then I want to ask one more question personally. Sure. If you could take any class at Conestogo, which one would it be? That's a good oh, question. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> um, you probably expect me to say social studies. Yeah. But no, it's not. Really? Because uh, I've taught those classes and I love them. If I were to want to take something, be something completely that I'm not used to. Okay. And I think that if I look at the teachers uh, who are here, oh man. If I had the opportunity to do mm -hmm. it and I had the knowledge to do it, mm -hmm. um, I know there's two or three teachers in the math department teachers, I would want to take multivariable math. With Mr. Poise? Mm -hmm. It is, I walk in that class sometimes, talk to Mr. Boyce about come to the things happening, and I sometimes mm -hmm. I used to observe him too. Mm -hmm. And I go in a class, I'm like, I would love to be able to sit there to figure these questions out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a, Mr. Boyce told me a story a couple years ago. We had a student who was uh, doing his internship yep. at Princeton. Wow, wow. Wound up, wound up working with a professor to solve, I don't know, some theorem mm -hmm. that hasn't been solved in like decades. And this kid and this professor figured it out. I'm like, I would love to have that ability to do that. But mm -hmm. to take multivariable math to me would be, and be able to do it well, mm -hmm. not just take it, but do it well, do well, would be a thing I would love to mm -hmm. take. I just don't think I have the brain for that. Yeah, speaking on like the calculus, I remember you said previously that you intended to go into calculus, like a math teacher. Oh, yes. And calculus, something with a circle. Can you tell us the story? So the first day you're sitting in calculus class at college, I didn't take calculus at high school because it was restricted. You mm -hmm. had to be in 
like the top 30 of the kids in the, in the, in the senior class to take it. I oh, was wow. not. So I, take, I was going to become a math teacher first. Yep. Went into the calculus class. Guy sat there, really unique individual teaching the class. Large pouch of pens in his pocket. Drew a circle on the board and drew these lines with all the pinpoints through it. Mm -hmm. And started talking about differentials, which I've heard of before that because I yep. took um, trick and pre-cal. Mm -hmm. And then sat there and said, you know, about being a circle. So I'm like, and, well, a circle's not really a circle. It's just points on straight lines going around. And I'm like, so professor, um, so you're telling me that a circle, which I have known for 19 years of my life, is not a circle. Now he goes, no, I said, what is it? He goes, it's just points. It's points on straight lines. I'm like, mm. but those straight lines don't make circles. No, no, it's the points that make the circle. And I'm like, Thank you. Got up and walked out. I had to take my card at that point because you didn't have any digital thing. Took it to the head of the department and said, I'm out of this class. <laughs> I said, I'm going to go teach history. <laughs> so that was, that was my issue with the uh, calculus. Like, I can't blame you. I have never heard of anything like that, <laughs> even in Cal. Like, I, told Mr. Poise, I told Mr. Poise. I told Mr. Poise. I walked. He goes, well, he, I think he explained it wrong. I'm like, oh, he explained it right because it saved me a whole career of taking <laughs> math. <laughs> Clearly, it's hmm. worth it. I have just, I have a personal sure. question too. No problem. Um, do you think that Conestoga can pr improve its school spirit? There's always room for improvement. Mm -hmm. I think, you, you have to understand too, we have 24, 23 to 4, 2400 kids in this building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to make everyone, you know, goo yeah. for a Conestoga. Of course. But uh, I think that, um, I think that it, it, we're very diverse mm -hmm. in our thought process, in our uh, abilities, but also in our link to the school. Mm -hmm. And kids are linked here for different ways and different things. And I think that people think that when they think of school spirit, it's like being the football games. Yep. Yeah. Or it's being there. So no, you know what the school spirit is? Coming and supporting each other when yep. you need to be there. So if the mock debate team, mock trial team is doing something, mm -hmm. hey, just checking it out, what's going yep. on. Um, it could be um, on a day we had the wellness week last week, mm -hmm. coming and supporting kids when they're doing the paintings in here and yep. things like that. It doesn't have to be coming to every event and being at the sport events. It means mm -hmm. just supporting each other. And I think we have a great deal of it. But I also think, too, is that people mm -hmm. look at the big events. Yep. How many kids are cheering in the football stands? Yeah. That's not, that's, mm -hmm. that's kids who like football. Or kids like yep. to come out and be social. But you have other ways to show school spirit. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. How many kids walk around this building with a Conestoga hat, Conestoga shirt, Conestoga anything? Mm -hmm. A lot of them do. Mm -hmm. And it says something. Yep. That says something. So kind of going more into the spirit stuff, so like planning something like Mental Health Week, like if you go back like five years, would you have ever expected to have events like that? No. Where, mm -hmm. you know, student-led initiatives that are you know, like blocking out kind of like a whole week for I would say I, I always appreciate student-led initiatives mm -hmm. to do different things. Yep. Um, and I've been here when students wanted to do different things, mm -hmm. and which are great. Mm -hmm. uh, and we support that. I think that Wellness Week came out of one or two students, really one really, who pushed that event mm -hmm. out there. And as administrators, we looked at it, we evaluated it, saying, okay, there's merit here. Yep. But I think that, you know, you talk about the things that have changed over years, mm -hmm. recognizing mental health more and more and more yep. was not something that when I came here 15 years ago, that was well known. We had one mm -hmm. mental health specialist when I came here. Yep. Mm -hmm. We have three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. We had nine counselors. We got 11 now. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I, I think that um, those things really mean a lot to the community, but mean a lot to the kids because you recognize it. And we took our time. I mean, last week was so great because mm -hmm. every class had a presentation in the auditorium. Yep. Every class had a discussions mm -hmm. about it. It was very, the stress in the building was great. And on a Friday, you ended with a very easy day. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, not easy in the sense of coursework, but mm -hmm. in course of, hey, let's take it slow. Let's take mm -hmm. a step back and enjoy being together and do different activities. Yep. It was a really good event. I think mm -hmm. it was really well needed for the uh, student body. Yep. And <coughs> that was, and that was, like I said, you have a group of students, mm -hmm. one in particular, who, who pushed that idea to us. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't say no to it because it was so planned out so well. Yep. And it meant something so big to the, every kid in the building. Okay. And I got to ask, when are the dogs coming back? I heard last year oh. when I was talking to people, they said monthly. Like, I don't think it was monthly. I think, oh, I think uh, from what I heard of what happened with the dogs mm -hmm. on Wellness Day mm -hmm. was that uh, they, they booked the dogs. Yeah. Okay. They had them all confirmed and all the stuff. Mm -hmm. And like the day before, oh, yeah, only one dog can make it. And we're like, Oh my God! I remember the people who were in charge were like, "How are we gonna bring one dog in here for people?" I'm like, "Well, if you don't bring a dog in, <laughs> so these kids are gonna go nuts." Yep. And so they brought the one dog in, and they tried to do the best they could. But it was, it was not something that wasn't planned out. It mm -hmm. was something that was dropped yep. on the people mm -hmm. planning for the dogs to come in. 
oh, by the way, the other four dogs can't make it. Like, what? All four. It's all yeah. four. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was not well appreciated. But I, I, the funny thing is I was so busy on Friday, I, get a ch I didn't get a chance to see the dogs. Right. I wanted to see the dog. And I got to ask, I heard from my gov teacher that this junior class meeting <clears throat> that we're going to have tomorrow is 97% good. Is that true? Yeah, it is. Well, here's the thing. You got to realize this. This, this, <laughs> is, this is me saying it. I can't sit there and say I prove statistics to say this. But um, out of every class, you have 3% of the students who are the ones that I know by name and by heart and parents by name. Mm -hmm. Because they're in my office all the time. Yep. Each administrator can say that. So it's 3%. I think what happens is that in society and as people, we have a tendency to look at the most, the loudest mm -hmm. and the bad. Yep. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the problem is, is that you'll look at and deal with 3% of any area's population 95% of the time. Mm -hmm. That means we deal with 97% of the time, 97% of the kids in the class, 5% of the time. Mm -hmm. So therefore the frequent flyers are the ones we get to know real well and mm -hmm. we forget about the other 97%. Yep. Yeah. So my thing is to sit there and tell people, to remind them that we deal with 3% of the issues that come up. Mm -hmm. but 97 percent of the kids in this building are doing everything each and every day that they should mm -hmm. so when students come across me and say that's we'll have a question you know sorry do you know who i am i said no i don't you've not been in my office <laughs> so that is not meant to be a cop-out or something mean it's mean to sit there and say because we haven't come across you you're yeah i only deal with not only deal with that most kids i deal with are the kids who Get do some things that aren't smart mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. something stupid or something they're not thinking of. Mm -hmm. And this year for me as a senior class, that's been less. Okay. That has been less. So in previous years, I could say it would have been 5% and mm -hmm. 3% right now. Okay. That's good. Yeah. That sounds good. And just a little bit more. I just heard about this sure. recently. I don't know too much. Uh, I heard the senior lip dub was canceled. What? What's I did hear about It was that. canceled. Uh, we, we did inform the group that t that is in charge of this. Mm -hmm. uh, that we would not approve them doing it the way we've done it in the past. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we felt that in the last couple of years, uh, the issues have grown oh, with like that. Oh, silly string and stuff yeah. last year? Some of those mm -hmm. things. And as the event has grown to become more problematic, there's been less kids involved with it. Mm -hmm. So you th like every, everyone thinks every kid in the class is involved with it. That's not true. Mm -hmm. That is not true. Unfortunately, it's not true. Yep. So uh, the film club, which is a group of like six, max seven people, mm -hmm. coordinate have coordinated that activity every year we've done it. Now, we've not done it every single year. Mm -hmm. That always depends on the class. And so we didn't inform them, and they were disappointed, but we asked them to come, if they, have, if they really want to, offer some suggestions of how we could do this differently, mm -hmm. and we'll evaluate it, meet with them, and see what we're going to do. So they are giving, we're waiting for proposals from them this week. Okay. okay. And they'll let us know uh, what they're thinking of. With you. It'll be a discussion. Okay, let's see what you want to do. But the main part is to understand this, too, is that when we did the little dub in the past, as it's grown, it's become more disruptive. Mm -hmm. Not just last year, it has become more disruptive. Year on year. And we have 1,800 kids in this building, roughly 1,800 kids in this building who are still in class at that day. Yep. Yeah. So it's not fair to them. To it's not them. fair to all the teachers trying to go over assessments and things like that and teaching and all that stuff. We also had AP exams going on during that time this year. During the little dub? So all mm -hmm. these things lead us to a point where we can't be disrupting the educational environment for mm -hmm the AP test takers, yep. and the mm -hmm. other students in this building. <clears throat> okay. So it's not canceled, it's just, there needs to be a discussion about we it. We said we wouldn't allow it to happen the way we have done it in years past, so if you want to consider canceling, it's fine, but it's up to the students, because it's a yep. student-driven event yep. that they propose to us how they want to do it, mm -hmm. and we will evaluate that to see what we can and will not support. Okay, okay. All right. that's pretty fair. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any other questions for Me at the moment? Uh, do you want to eat another wing? No, 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 no. Right. I can still feel good on my throat. That's the funny thing. It's right. hot. So I guess I don't. Dean, how about you? No, no, no more. All right. That seems to be it for this episode of Still Going Air. Hopefully, we'll go number one in Pakistan this time. Yes. Nice to have you, Dr. Thank Blue. you, gentlemen. I'll see you soon. It's been a pleasure again. Thank, Thank you so much.